Angels Divine. Welcome, welcome to Souls Talking Brain. Da, 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 da. Ta -da. <laughs> well, hello. So it's been a little bit of time since we've been here. We took a little brief hiatus that we don't normally take during our season <laughs> as I went home to Montreal to be with mom and dad, sending out Mucho, mucho love to mommy as she is healing from <laughs> hip replacement surgery. Mwah. Mm. And of course to our entire families and extended families and extended, extended families. We love you and send forth our blessings to one and all. Speaking of families, we actually have quite the special subject matter for today. I don't know that we have ever actually um, spoken to this subject matter, and I am blissed beyond as <laughs> being a mom myself uh -huh. and having had the awesome blessing uh, to raise a child, to witness the remarkable, remarkable miracle that is human life in watching a child grow and understanding the importance and the responsibility that one takes on in choosing to be a parent mm -hmm. and choosing to be in the life of a child. Mm -hmm. As Aline, you mm -hmm. yourself know, having taken on that responsibility to be... <laughs> An integral as part of the growth, as close right? as, as close as can be, yes. So today's show actually is dedicated to the miracle of we, as we are when first we come here, children of our Earth School, and moreover to the ease and grace by which we may develop here mm -hmm. as opposed to what many of us experience <laughs> over there a little rocky, <laughs> a little rocky at here, times you know as opposed to there a little here. rocky at times <laughs> and indeed most of what we deal with as adults mm -hmm. when we're trying to deal with our wounds or our issues mm -hmm. are from past traumas that are initiated in childhood mm -hmm. and well, sure <laughs> We have an extraordinarily yeah. special guest mm -hmm. who's here with us today. We've actually had him on the show before, mm -hmm, and have. it was such an enjoyable experience. It was very, very nice. It was a wonderful experience, yes. And I, and I recall it. It was a few years ago. Yeah. And I do remember it quite well, and I do remember the gifts that I received. Right? From what he had to present. Exactly. Yeah. And even though we already mm -hmm. knew, there was even more that came through in the interview mm -hmm. than what we had read in his book. Yeah. His name is John Seeley. And when we last had him on the show, it was to share with you his book, Get Unstuck, which, as Aline said, has <laughs> some amazing pearls of wisdom in it. Yeah. And he is back with us today as he has written a new book, Get Unstuck for Kids, uh -huh. which I just think is brilliant. Of course. I mean, why would you... Pfft. That's where you should start, you know? Exactly. Not, not midway. Not, hap not, not after. after. I mean, un you know, unfortunately, you know, we get stuck and then we have to get unstuck. But like... What if we don't have to get unstuck? What's the best way to, to, to ensure that you're not going to get stuck? You start early and you start when you're children. And, so, and he's provided that to go into the root, which is the root of your yes. beginning of your childhood, to ensure that you do not get unstuck. 
to yeah. ensure that you don't get you stuck. don't get stuck <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get unstuck <laughs> <laughs> exactly when you get old and, and that's being stuck in life just stuck in general with um, anything that it is that you're doing, being, you know. As, as I love what you said, by the way. Yeah. When you said it gets to the root yeah. cause, because it's so it's so multi uh, meaningful, right? Yes. Because your roots, your, your childhood, childhood yeah, the yeah. root cause. <laughs> I thought that's brilliant. Anyway, okay. that's there just me go. picking up on these little things. Of course. <laughs> so. Do, did we have um, a bio that we wanted to read first before we called John, just yeah, to give people a little bit more insight? Sure, yes. Um, got um, the number one best-selling author, international motivational speaker, radio host, and life coach, John Seeley has been called Dr. Phil with soul. He is a much sought-after speaker with a following in 44 countries around the world. Wow. He has hosted his own radio shows for more than 10 years and been featured in the New York Times, the LA Times, Women's World Magazine, the Hong Kong Trade, and numerous other periodicals and on radio and TV shows throughout North America. Whoa. Whoa. John holds an undergraduate degree in business, a master's degree in psychology, and is the number one best-selling author of Get Unstuck. The Simple Guide to Restart Your Life, Get Unstuck for Kids, a fun interactive guide to empower your child for life, and his latest Keep On Believing Stories of Inspiration, Courage and Triumph, along with other books and articles. Talk about a busy man. Let's talk about a busy Doing man. Doing such wonderful things for the benefit of all. That's yeah. So obviously you can understand why we are excited about today's show, why we are excited to be able to co-creatively collaborate with John here mm -hmm. on Being Love TV Souls Talking Brain. So perhaps we should... Give him a call. Get on with it then. <laughs> so why don't we give him a call? <laughs> Is it ringing? Brum, brum. You don't have to do it here. Mm -mm. Ah. Just whisper. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and we're calling. And we're calling, calling. John? Hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Wonderful. <laughs> okay, oh. great. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> are you okay there? <laughs> well, I don't have my computer with me, so oh. uh, my whole day is off. Oh, sorry. Say that again? My whole day is off because without the computer, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> now isn't that a statement of the of, of the times it so, is so are you are you able to use skype are you just doing doing it uh, through your phone this is my phone right now yes ah. do you have video of it do you have video um availability i see you ah yes you do <laughs> Yes, you do. And if you don't, that's completely fine because we could also put you live if you are, um, if you do have we'll a capability. Live yet. No. You have to wait just a second. <laughs> take, okay. your take your time. Take your time. Not a problem, Take John. your time. Hold on for a second. <laughs> you can look at the of that thing. <laughs> well, we are very. Um, this is actually uh, for all you watching right now. This is. Um, this is the first time that we are actually doing our show um, with respect to getting more visuals uh, with respect to just putting a, a, a photo of our lovely guests that we have here on our show. So we are right now going to be able to see John live as opposed to his, you know, fixed photo, which is still just as lovely, but we are... We have gotten to the place gotten, yes, where a we are bit now ready to have ready to do that, that much more of an interactive experience <laughs> with each of you by having our guests not only heard live, yes. but seen live, which yes. is always so lovely. Yes. So we are very blissed to be able to share that with all of you. And of course, while we are 
um, waiting for John to get his uh, technological <laughs> things in order. If I can just bring your attention to the fact that, as we were saying, this show is both live mm -hmm. and audience interactive. Mm -hmm. So essentially what that means for you beautiful Earth Angels is that somewhere on the screen that you are watching us now, around it, <laughs> to the right, to the left, above Just or below, around. depending on where, there <laughs> is a chat or a social stream button or icon. And if you click on there, you will have a little space where you can actually write and we will see that as soon mm -hmm. as you click send or go or whatever it says on yours. It will come up and we will see it here and we will be able to interact with you live as you will be able to interact with both us and John. Mm -hmm. So just to keep that in mind because I'm sure that we will all have some wonderful questions for John with respect to this wow. great gift of soul's love that he has recently created <laughs> to get unstuck for kids. I'm at, okay. uh, uh, yes? Uh, you guys can't see me, can you? Not yet. <laughs> All right, hang on. Well, we see a picture. <laughs> well, we see a picture, yes. Oh, there's some. Oh, there's oh some. here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> there we go. And there oh, we are. Oh. Say, say hi to everybody, Don. <laughs> and uh, and I've got a copy of the book. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You look great, John. Nice. Very oh, you nice. Don't know, you don't know the half of it. I just, I just walked two miles. <laughs> well, so, yes. it's good. It the means that you got uh, good exercise. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. It's good. You got the exercise okay. ready to go. Got on. Yeah, today was about me getting unstuck, so I got unstuck. Good. Uh, well, you know, we oftentimes have to use our own love's wisdom that's shared with others with ourselves. Probably more often than not. <laughs> well, that, that was one of the lessons I was learning today because um, I actually remember earlier today saying, I want to exercise more. And then I got forced to walk two miles. Like, okay, well, there you go. You got exercise. Well, that's pro -noia. The universe is working for you. I tell you, you know, you know how to manifest when you just suggest something and there, there it happens. <laughs> Absolutely. So... We made the suggestion to have you back on the show because of this wonderful new book that you wrote. And here we are mm -hmm. making it happen. So what motivated you? Where, where did the inspiration come to go from Get Unstuck for Adults to Get Unstuck for Kids? Where, like, How did that come into being? Well, I had, um, I had actually taught kids who, you know, parents had brought kids to some of my workshops. Okay. So I actually taught kids as young as six. Wow. So I did grasp the concept, but I thought it would be easier if we could put it in story form. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it, in each chapter, we put a story with a, a little boy and little girl uh, learning the concept of the chapter in the story. Right. But it's also meant to, to be read with an adult because sometimes they might not even know the lesson either, and they're learning it at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, it's actually a built up like a workbook, and I, I wanted it to be something where it would help the, the child to bond with the adults. Because one of the questions I put at the back of the chapter first, you know, there are questions about the story, and then there's questions about the the, the lesson in the chapter. But one of the questions I thought was really key was I said, "Ask the child. The child is to ask the adult, how did you learn this concept in your life?'" Right, which is just and brilliant. Some, some, yeah, because some will go, well, I just learned it with you. But a lot of times they'll go, you know, when I was your age, here's what happened. And then yeah. they'll tell you the story. Because most parents don't tell about their childhood to their kids. Yeah. Yes, and storytelling. A hundred percent. It helps the child understand the adult. A hundred, well, uh, understand the adult and also understand life in general mm -hmm. in greater ease. I mean, there's one thing to be said for having life experiences, which obviously is our best way of learning, but to be prepared for those life experiences as children, the best ways that we learn are, are more play-oriented ways. Mm -hmm. And storytelling for time immemorial, immemorial has been the way that we have passed on the wisdom of our life experiences. Yeah. So I think that's just brilliant. With respect to 
the philosophy behind teaching children, like, you know, there's this thought with respect to kids, like they're innocent, why do, you, why do we need to be teaching them at such a young age? And although Aline and I spoke to it a little bit at the, at the um, introduction of the show, I was hoping to get from you your perspective as to why you feel that this book is so useful to children and, you know, why bother even in the first place with such a book for kids? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think um, kids, you know, they're learning as they go and unfortunately they get trials and tribulations uh, at, at an early age. Sometimes yeah. it's actually from home before they even go to school mm -hmm. uh, because life doesn't care how old you are. It offers you challenges whenever. And, um, and so, uh, you know, I remember growing up, you know, pretty much from the time I was six on, I was on my own. Right. And so I had to learn everything on my own, really. I, I, I mean, I got taught, you know, how to read and write and, uh, you know, some arithmetic, things like that. But as far as life skills, nothing. Right. So mm -hmm. I thought, boy, if I would have had this when I was a, a child, my whole life would be different. Yes. And so I wanted... I wanted to give that to the to the youth today, so their lives would be different. Therefore, the world would be different. Ah, oh, that's so that so that's what we were saying in the introduction. I just wanted to have it in your words. <laughs> so we're on the same we're on the same uh, path or wavelength here. So, with respect to the book itself, you had made mention that it's it's divvied up into stories, and it also is uh, you call it a workbook. I would call it more a playbook, but. Um, there are questions at the end that relate to the story. So, how do you how did how did that come up for you? And and how do you find how how have you, how have you found the response mm. to setting the book up in that way? I found that um, the reason I put questions at the end of the chapter are to make sure that they really got the message of the chapter. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's it's also to create a dialogue whether it's a teacher or a parent and the child or children to have them talk about that. And because, because, you know, you can have 10 people look at something, they all got a different idea of what it means. Absolutely. And so this way they can have a dialogue or, or even just a big class discussion on, Oh, you know, when Susie did this, I thought it meant that. And someone else goes, no, it meant this. And, oh, I didn't think it meant that. And, you know, on and on. It can be great to get it. it you know, that helps to build the child's, ability to think and ability to problem solve because you can't control if they have a problem or not, but you got to give them the skills. Then it doesn't matter how many problems they get. They got the skills to deal with them. And that's what the book's about. Yeah. So that's let's perfect. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, go ahead. It's perfect. It really is. Let's talk a little bit about some of the skills that are presented in the book. Some of the lessons and some of the assistance that is provided through the lessons that you are presenting in the book. If you don't mind sharing a, a few. <laughs> well, sure. Um, one of them is, and, and this is one for adults too, because a lot of adults don't believe in it, but uh, the chapter is Miracles Happen Every Day. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just like I manifested, you know, getting more exercise today. That was a little <laughs> miracle. But usually I'm, I'm sitting and writing, you know, so I, I, I'm not getting as much exercise as I need to. This way I got my butt out the door and I was walking all over the place today. So, um, but, you know, miracles happen where you say, like, boy, I wish they would call. Like, we had a miracle right here because I got in the door just shortly before you called just in time to be able to get the call and do this call, whereas I was trying to get my computers back to be able to do this, and they're still not here, by the way, <laughs> and and they'll be delivered in a couple hours. So it's like, you know, that was a little miracle that I was able to do it on the phone. And mm. and so the, the story has to do with how um, it's, it's what I call your perfect day. Right. That's where the child, um, we get them to, to learn how to create their perfect day by, by setting intentions, by, you know, setting, here's what I want to create today. And you start with, you know, it's an attitude, first of all, that, you know, it's going to be a good day. And even adults need that, believe me. Absolutely. I, I talk to somebody, how's it going today? Oh, it's terrible. Well, okay, that's how you look at it. But, I mean, I understand there's challenges, but you got to try to, you know, take the lemons and make the lemonade, you know what I mean? Um I have so many people I know. I had a client call today that uh, something was about to happen, and she went to the just the worst possible case scenario. 
Right. And I said, but mm -hmm. you don't know that that's going to happen. Let's let's focus on the best case scenario that you'd like to have happen instead. Because first of all, wouldn't you rather have that happen? Because you get what you put your energy on. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't you rather do that instead of worrying about, oh my God, it could be this. Right. And you don't even know it's that. It's like, worry is interest paid on a loan that may never come due. Worry. Can you say that you again? You have to say that. <laughs> you have to that. You know, worry, uh, worry is interest paid on a loan that may never come due. Right. A lot of people don't understand that you're giving, you know, your energy to something. It may never happen, and, and you you worried for nothing. So Absolutely. People, if you can do something about it, do that. And if you can't, let it go. Yeah, my saying to that one is, it, you know, yeah, yeah, my saying for that one is, it was all for naught. Mm -hmm. All that worry was yeah. for naught. For naught, yes. Yeah. And you've just expended all of this energy that you could have been making use of to be thinking about glorious, wonderful things, which may not have been either, but at least you would have been feeling fabulous in the process. Well, that's true. And, and what a lot of people don't realize is worry is stress, and stress has an effect, a negative effect on your body, your physical body. Oh, yes. And you can get indeed. illness from that. You know, you can get diseases from that. You can get weakness from that. All sorts of things. So you might as well focus on the best you can hope for, and then you know, deal with what comes up. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's one of the one of the examples of one of the lessons in the book. Can you give us maybe one more, if you don't mind, a little preview? <laughs> well, I don't mind. And by the way, here's another reason I write these books. I actually wrote a little series of ten books that um, we're working on publishing right now. It's on uh, anti-bullying. Beautiful. Oh, nice. for kids. Beautiful. You know, and again, it, it's like if you can empower a child, then they don't feel the need to bully. And if they do get bullied, then they know what to do about it. And Absolutely. They don't feel that they're bullied. They, oh. So, you know, that's that's kind of the, the idea. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, hmm. It's about kids taking back their power. But one of the things that, and this goes for adults too, frankly. Um, and by the way, there's a lot of activities in the book. So it really is a playbook. I love that idea. I'm going to call mm -hmm. it a playbook from now on. Um, <laughs> because we put activities, not just questions, but activities in the chapters yeah. so that they can, you know, really work on, you know, we're going to give them some skills. We're going to really get them practice at these skills so they'll know what they're doing. Well, of course, you um, want them to be able to integrate mm -hmm. and then embody the wisdom that you're sharing. And the only way to be able to do that is to truly have that experience. So... And we 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 switch everything here at Being Love from work to play, guidebook, uh, workbooks or playbooks, workshops or play shops. Mm -hmm. It's just the way we roll. <laughs> I think that's a great way to go, and I, I love the concept. So I'm gonna from now on. I'm calling it a playbook. So it's yes, it's a playbook, uh, and and especially when it, you know it's the kids' book. So it definitely is a playbook. Um, okay, so I, I'll tell you what. One of the other things I think really important one that we put in there is about forgiveness. Okay. Because, you know, the thing is, the biggest thing we can do to change our own lives is to forgive ourselves and to forgive other people. Because otherwise, it's like you're holding a hot coal and you're the one that's getting burned. The hot coal is what you want to throw at the other person, but until you throw it, you're getting burned. And frankly, the other person's probably never going to get burned by it. <laughs> and I don't so, think you would you feel know. too great about yourself if no. you actually threw it and burnt them. Mm. So. Well, true. And here's the other thing. Most people don't realize if you are critical of anybody else, then, you know, they say, uh, judge, judge not lest you be judged. Yeah. But the reality is it, it's not necessarily judged by other people. What I tell people is if you judge anybody, you always judge yourself harsher than you judge anybody else. So if you're yeah. being really harsh to other people, guess what? There's a part of you that's doing that worse to you. Yes. So wouldn't it be better if you stopped it all together to you and to them? Absolutely. There's mm. so much wisdom that you're sharing in your book, which um, a having had the pleasure of going through it ourselves, uh, Aline and I were discussing, and you, you have actually made mention of it a few times here on the show, where although it was geared to children and you do have the activities and the questions at the back, which are again, directed to children, they are also span the generations and definitely is something that I can see adults mm -hmm. making great use of. And we were actually um, making, making a little comparison to Dr. Seuss's Oh, the Places You'll Go. It's written in a childlike voice, 
but it is embraced by adults the world over. Yeah. And we definitely feel that with your book. Would you say, with respect to an adult wanting um, to expand their consciousness and their awareness and their their tool set of resources in order to be able to respond to life, that this is something that they could benefit from even if they don't have children. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it really is. And the thing is, uh, we learn best in story form. That's why it's great for adults or for children. And also, yeah, you know, even even with my books, uh, even the first one and, and this one and, uh, and the others, anyway, I still go back and need the lessons again and again. And I'll tell you a funny story. So I was sitting in a hot tub one night, and I, I had um, my iPhone, and I, I, I hit the, the play to have music playing. I just put shuffle. And I forgot that I had my audio book on there. And so I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, one of my chapters pops up. And I go, oh, I must need to learn this again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that that is actually the thing. I wrote these because... This is not the kind of thing you get all at once. It's the kind of thing that you'll, you know, have to go back to because we forget, you know. Yes. Life happens and we forget about that. Oh, yeah. So uh, it's, it's good to have a reminder. Even if you knew this lesson, a lot of the adults really don't. I mean, I never did. I didn't learn this until I was an adult. And and then I studied it for 20 years and learned, oh, my God, there's so much, you know, important work that can be done mm -hmm. that can change your life. And most people will not take 20 years to study this. You know, I've read thousands, literally thousands of other people's books. I've studied with the best people in the business. Um, now I've been on stage with the best people in the business. I've interviewed them all on my radio show. And the idea is, I've been learning, kind of like Oprah, I've been learning from everybody else on what the best ideas are out there. And so what I try to do is condense it down and give it to people in an easy to use, easy to understand format so that they can just refer to it and go, oh, I'm having this challenge, I'm stuck in my life. Let's go look at the book. And that, again, whether it's for kids or the adults, um, I've taught, by the way, I've taught the, the same work in high schools. I've also taught it in prisons. But now they're teaching it in rehab centers. Wonderful. Um, because, again, a lot, of, a lot of people don't realize how far reaching this is. This work can change a lot of people's lives in a lot of ways and prevent a lot of that other stuff that's going on, including people being locked up in, in whether a rehab center or a prison or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so this work is important, and it's also for your health. Because you do have a better physical body, uh, mental body, and emotional body from using this and doing this kind of work. It's uh, it's interesting to me. Well, it's not. It's it's a lot of writers. You know, they write and it's they're very scholarly and they have fancy words and you know, fancy ways and sometimes even a little bit difficult to understand uh, because it's so fancy. And when you just mentioned right now that you have ensured that you've written it within the simplicity of through the language and, and through the understanding and what it's about it's extremely it's possibly crucial into what it is that if you are to do something to assist yourself like to get unstuck and you are helping yourself in life whether it is through your health mental body whatever it is all of your beingness that makes you you in a simple way it should never be hard to be able to go through something that's already hard so I am extremely excited um, and, and, and even, um, and even grateful. grateful, thank you, yes. <laughs> that a writer such as yourself and a published author who is able to write and share their wisdom and share their work um, through a simple manner that anyone from any age will be able to understand. Absolutely. And it's, it's the whole point, you know, the whole point, Absolutely. especially about something that it is to it's do so with self-development. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you don't want to, as you were saying, you're already in a position, mm -hmm. if you are making use of a book like that, where you're feeling stuck, the yeah. last thing you need is to have a dictionary in order to unstuck you from the reading that you're yeah. doing yes. and trying to yes. figure out what it means. Well, it's, it's you know, especially, it's, it is because you don't want to, you know, there's so many books out there. There's a lot of things out there. There's wonderful things out there that we can read about, you know, helping ourselves. Um, and it's uh, how sophisticated is the reading just as much makes a difference between how productive and how um, easily integrated yeah it useful can be. it can be so yeah. when you're when the book is for kids so what how early yeah would you say like we, we've we've already uh, noted that we can you know go up in age as far as as infinitum but how early 
would you say the book would be useful to start with a child? Well, it depends on how mature they are, but maybe five or six is okay. usually a really good place. For them. That's where they, they've got enough skills that they can understand the concepts, and uh, and also that's when they start dealing with, that they're around first grade, they're starting to deal with you know people, that kids that they don't know, right. and that's when they have more challenges. So, um, uh, and I, like I said, I've worked with kids uh, six years old that I taught these um, these elements to, and, and they were able to get it. Um, and, and that's that's an important thing. And, and you know, usually I'd say this book probably, even though it's good for adults too, uh, you know, I in high school uh, I started using a regular book, uh, the regular Get Unstuck, the simple right, right, right. Book. And in fact, as a as a side, I don't know what kind of audience to have, but um, I just sold five thousand copies of it in Spanish. Oh wow, gosh, John, congratulations! Uh, there's That's, a huge market out there for personal development in the uh, Hispanic world. So. Uh, if you know people about that, that book's available as well. That's, that's lovely. Well, it's 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 a it's a, it's, a, it's a great it's it's a language. Language is you know key, right? So you the more you expand out into the world, and the, there's people around the world who will be able to read it, is is even that much more great, greater and, and beneficial for everyone. Everyone. Well, you help one individual, you help everyone because everything is energy and. That's really what our show is all about. Whether we reach one person or 5,000 people, one person who is positively affected positively affects everyone mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. It is inescapable because we are all connected. We are all one. So if one person's vibrational frequency is raised, um, then it positively affects everyone else like a rock in, in rippling into uh, the lake or an ocean. So... And you, you also mentioned that you've used the book in schools and jails and rehab. So it's something, obviously, that traverses both age as well as environment. Yes? Yeah, it really does. And, uh, and the thing is, the, the people that have been getting this information are truly grateful because the reason that they got into that situation is because they didn't have the skills to deal with the problems in any other way. They didn't know any other way. And this was like, I could see light bulbs going off right over their heads and they were like, oh my God. Um, I'll give you one example I used, which uh, I just got goosebumps. Uh, and I was in a prison and I was, uh, I was teaching this concept. I said, um, okay, if someone offers you a gift and you don't accept it, whose is it? So I'll ask you guys, if I, if I offer you a gift and you don't accept it, whose is it? Yours. Yes, it's mine. <laughs> so, I said to them, so, what if someone offers you the gift of anger and you don't accept it? And honestly, God, I saw like flashbulbs going off. I mean, you mean I don't have to be upset if they're upset? Like, yeah, exactly. Mm. Like, it's just they're upset. Like, you let them upset. That's not you. Like, ah, oh, I don't have to be, be that way. They never saw that right. in their life. Anytime someone was upset, the other person got upset. So, that's what they should do. And they, they're like, oh my God. What a great concept. I don't have to be upset because they're upset. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of thing that helps people when you get those little realizations. Yeah. All of a sudden your life can be completely different. Well, it's, it's, um, we are conditioned to, to re react and respond and, 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 you know, and to, to take things as they are as opposed to realizing that as they appear to be as they yeah exactly as they appear to be as opposed it's to within our it's, it's all in our perception right yeah <laughs> as everything is perception so we tend to forget that we are the ones driving the bus <laughs> you know and that we are the ones who allow disallow take on not take on receive accept or give so you know, that's so I, I'm loving that you're saying this because I was just about to pose this question to mm -hmm. John, which um, speaking of posing questions to John, we have a few more questions for John that we would like to share uh, his answers with all of you when we get back after this very brief little real, real quick little uh, little little commercial <laughs> break.
you just saw on the screen, if you would like to be a guest on our show, if there is somebody that you would like to suggest who has inspired you that you think would be a wonderful match for our show, mm -hmm. if you would like to have an avenue to promote your services, your products of Love's Wisdom for the benefit of all, get in touch with us. The email address where you can do that is being love at one the number one is all dot com just right there underneath our beautiful goddess Celine. <laughs> which just happens to be right underneath me <laughs> yes it does oh well there you go so being love at one is all dot com for any inquiries suggestions mm -hmm. and information regarding donations advertising promotions on the show wonderful all right let's get back to John and getting unstuck for kids so it's a book about empowering children. Um, it's a book that is inspired by the book that you had written for adults, which mm. was Get Unstuck. Um, and we were speaking right before the break. There's the Spanish one. Oh, that's the that's the uh, that's the, that's the that's the first first version of the French one, right? No Spanish. Spanish sorry. Oh, this is, this is Spanish. Yes. Yeah, because the yeah, because I, I got a new cover now. But uh, the point was. <laughs> I had to change the name of the book because there's no word unstuck in any other language but English. Interesting. <laughs> well, I like liberate. Oh, so. I like well, liberate. Okay, that means free stuff. That means free. Yeah, yeah so. liberation. Absolutely. It works just, yeah. it works well. And it's, it, I mean, what else would you say? Well, liberation is liberation quite a good, is pretty much liberate yourself, free yourself. I mean, well, who listen, doesn't listen to the English speaking language people like ourselves? You know, get unstuck. You know, is 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 for us. You know, <laughs> I'm sure if even if you did it in German, you know, it's would you know they have their own way of saying certain words. You know, that doesn't translate well. So, freedom. Liber freedom works for me. How would you pronounce that? Liberté. 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 Sounds nice to me too. Yeah. There you go. So before we went on break, so we were talking about. Um, Aline had mentioned, I was going to ask you, and Aline answered my question yeah. actually before, which is you've, you've created these books, and, and we're speaking about how you're meeting with all of these different people in play shops that you're doing, gatherings that you're having, and realizing that there are some very basic, what for a lot of people who have, like yourself and us, dedicated our lives to um, raising consciousness is common knowledge like if somebody is angry mm -hmm. it's theirs you don't have to own it identify with it or respond to it um, what is your take on how it is that we are on mass not maintaining a conscious awareness of what seems to be rudimentary common sense you know, uh, I've said this for decades. I hate to say it for that long, but I've said common sense is not common. Isn't that and sad? It, it's not, yeah, it is. It is sad. Uh, and the thing is, you don't really have it taught anywhere. Um, that would be great. If, if, if I'm taking common sense 101 this, this year because, uh, really, that's the kind of thing that would be very helpful. Uh, but uh, we don't get that. And so uh, the idea that... that you have to learn by, by making mistakes. And a lot of people don't like making mistakes, but really that's the only way we learn. If, if they don't teach you, like, here, don't put your hand over the fire. Until you put your hand over the fire, you don't know that you're going to get burned. And, oh, I'm not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. So that's how you get common sense is by making the mistakes. Right. But so, so many times people are judged for making the mistake. And, and, and like, why did you do that? Like, well, I, I wanted to learn. I didn't know, you know. And, and instead of going great, because you know what, that means you're learning something here. If, if people don't make mistakes, they don't learn. I've had people who I've saw who just have a luck into the right answer, but they didn't know how, so they could never repeat it. So they never really learned it. They got lucky one time, and they could never re repeat that luck. So common sense is where you learn to repeat the luck. You learn how, how life really works, and, um, and, and that's part of it is sharing with other people, meaning what you guys are doing right now, what we're doing, is sharing common sense, sharing life skills with people to help them have a better life. That's what this is about. 
So if, at least if people become curious and say, I want to make my life better, that's what's going to help, help them to learn more and therefore have more common sense. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, you know, it's inter it's interesting, you know, when, you know, we actually ourselves, you know, are the ones who are putting meaning into common sense, right? It's interesting when you said that we make the mistakes in order for us to learn, it's like, well, we learn, actually, the mistake is not necessarily that we have to learn to make the mistake to learn. It's just that we mm -hmm. need to experience. So the experience could be a mistake or not mistake. So it's really, at the end of the day, it's, it's because it's such a negative thing, right? And this is, this is, this is, um, this is just, you know, something that we, we hear, we talk about a lot is that when you have experience, it doesn't, because we give, we give everything meaning. We give something that is good or it's not good. We give everything meaning. So when we say that you have, that, that something negative is to happen for us to get the experience, well, that doesn't really make us look forward to little, to life and, 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 and certain things. Well, bad, bad things are going to have to happen until I get something good to happen. You know, it's not that it's bad and it's not that we have to learn to make the mistakes. We just have to have the experience. Right. So I think I agree. I think I think in some ways, you know, the same way as we get stuck in so many things is because we also as how you started off saying that we are the hardest on ourselves is that we can also be hard on ourselves before we even begin. Is you know, when you're before you're you, stuck, you're before stuck you before you even, you get, even get starting. Point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's how it's the mentality, but which is which is what before we began, before we actually called you, we were talking, saying, you know, you've gone to the root, and in your book, you've actually gone to doing this for for kids and starting at a very young age, you've gone to the roots of it, so that you started off, so that we begin in ensuring that we do not get stuck as we are adults. Well, that's exactly what I was going to say when I asked John the question, and you had made made mention that. A lot of people learn common sense because they've had the experience to garner the wisdom to understand the common sense. But again, if we are teaching mm -hmm. our children common sense, if we have books like yours, for example, in schools and as part of the regular curriculum, then a lot of these experiences that we are so afraid yeah. of experiencing because we might make a mistake are already lessened automatically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, right? it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's the same, it's the same thing as how you're raised, right? Same thing as if you're raised with <clears throat> how we're conditioned, you know, how you're raised also shapes, shapes your life, you know, it's, it's what you've learned. And when the earlier that you learn to be more conscious <laughs> of self, as opposed to comparing self with the rest of the world, which is really how we're conditioned. You know, for centuries we were conditioned about comparing who is this and wh where am I coming from and this is what I'm told. This is what I'm told that I should believe, this is what I should do, this is so on and so forth. We're not taught that it is within us that we are the ones that we have to be conscious of as opposed to the outer. It's a, you know, it's, it's uh, so that starting early obviously is... So let me let me ask you a question then with respect to what we're discussing now. Do you think it's possible? Do you think that we as a species are evolving to the point where we can actually have some modicum of relaxed trust that these horrible mistakes that we need to make in order to learn the common sense will be lessened because the common sense will be more proliferated to the masses. You know, uh, yeah, as you were talking, w one of the points that I, I mentioned to people is that 80% of your subconscious mind is programmed by the time you're eight years old. And this is like a computer program that runs in your head that tells you what to do, how to live your life like how to brush your teeth, how to walk, how to breathe, how to, you know, all that stuff gets programmed early on. And also, we make decisions on life that last the rest of our lives from that, which is like, what does love mean? And mm -hmm. we, whatever you grew up with between zero and eight, that's what your definition of love is. In your family, that's love, whatever that is. Whether it could be chaos, it could be really loving, 
could be judgmental, could be critical, oh, you know, who knows? And, and so th that learning, if you can get to child, to child early enough, um, where they get new skills and new understanding, as you said, a new awareness, um, where uh, it will change not only their current life in that instant, but for the rest of their life. It will, right. it will have a, a positive effect that will make a world of difference where they will see things differently, they will react differently, they will attract different things in their life, and that's amazing. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's just that's why I'm so thrilled about it. You, you mentioned about the book being in schools. I think the book should be in every grade school in the country, actually in the world. It's, it's not limited. Uh, mm -hmm. Because really, if you had these skills, the, everybody would be different. The whole life, everybody's life would be different. We might not even have wars because people would be empowered. So do you and think everybody, that it's... Everybody feels empowered. They don't feel threatened. Do you think that this is, is, is something that is happening now? Do you think that we can have some glimmer of hope that our world is evolving into that direction where lessons as those in Get Unstuck for Kids will be taught to our children before they come to the age of eight, that we will be or are evolving as a species to become more consciously aware in our day-to-day -day lives, more in tune with that which we deem common sense? <laughs> you know, uh, yes, uh, I think we are getting there. Um, we had an a, a explosion in the late 80s and 90s, but really it started back in the 60s and, and, and just kept growing, but it was an explosion of consciousness. Right. Where, uh, adults were on a, on a quest um, to, to find out what is life really about, what can they do differently, how can they really make their lives and the lives of the people around them and ideally the world uh, a better place. And so those people are still around. And um, and even though it, when we have a little financial challenge in the, in the world, um, that's actually when a lot of, when you get a lot of pressure. Um, I, I like the Wayne Dyer story that he uses. Uh, what do you get when you squeeze an orange? I'll ask you, girls. What do you get when you squeeze an orange? Juice. What kind of juice? Orange, orange juice. juice. <laughs> So, so if you squeeze an orange, you're never going to get apple juice. No. Right. Unless you you're squeeze the apple. <laughs> Unless right. you squeeze. So, so the question is, what do you get when someone squeezes you? A lean you juice. <laughs> you get whatever's inside. Yes. So that's the thing. It, 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 this, this is a, a way of empowering someone when they realize, if you ever go, they upset me. They made me mad. They didn't make you mad. They squeezed you. What came out was you were already mad inside. Mm -hmm. Right. So the skills in the book teach you how to dump that emotional baggage, to, to, to let go of the past, to let go of anger and upset and hurt and blame and all that, so that you don't carry that forward. And then if you don't carry that forward, you don't attract that into you. So how does, that mirrors. how does that relate to well, you, you began with... Uh, uh, that most people most often go into this due to finances. So how does that relate to someone dealing with the stress of financial strain in their lives? Well, you know, first of all, financial strain is uh, one of the most common uh, pressures that we feel in, in today's society. And uh, a lot of it's we bring on ourselves. Part of it is we, we have this feeling, and again, a lot of it's from childhood. Part of it is we feel we deserve to be punished. If you ever look, lottery winners usually lose all the money within five years. It's because they went way out of their comfort zone, and they didn't feel they deserved it, and they just frittered it away one way or the other and got rid of it so that they went back in their comfort zone. Well, getting this information helps to bring your comfort zone much wider right. so that you feel you deserve it and you and you make less mistakes and you feel less judged and therefore you you feel like you deserve more and you get more and and that's a lot of the financial strain is they don't feel that you I, I tell people you you're getting exactly what you believe you deserve right and if you don't consciously believe that that means that your subconscious mind does believe that and it's winning and usually it's winning because you don't know it's there because you're not paying attention I'm trying to tell people it's like there's two people in a canoe. One's rowing one way, one's rowing the other way. Where are you going? And if they realize that they're not ending up where they want to go, the other person in the canoe has got to control the canoe. Right. Mm -hmm. So I teach people, this, this work is where you get in alignment with your subconscious mind. You get it to align with you now 
to what you consciously want, and therefore you create uh, so much more. And that's why you know kids can do it. They they learn so much easier. I might add. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> they're definitely much more. We're much more open as children, well, yeah. and we're much more trusting. We're not as uh, we're not as um, jaded. 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 Yeah. Or, <laughs> we said that at the that same time <laughs> and the same word too. Uh, um, yeah, we're not. Which is you know, which yeah. is so much more accepting, much more, so much more open. I find that we are already unstuck as we are born. You know. Right, and then there's oh, yeah. that process of learning. From from mirroring your 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 parents and the people in your lives, mm -hmm. the adults around mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. who have themselves gone through their own conditioning, mm -hmm. their own training and yeah. programming from their parents, and back through the generations. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, well, earlier when I was asking John and he was responding to something, he said he, he was <laughs> sad that he had to say something that has been going on for decades. Yeah, but really, it's been going on for thousands of years. Yeah. Well, it's you know, it's uh, it's uh, actually it, for this book for 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 children is not it's 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 really excellent because it's telling us human beings as we come into this earth world to be to to ensure that there's the possibility that we can get stuck. So it's really what you're doing is you are ensuring as early on as possible to put that into the consciousness of our, of of our human of our human selves to be proactive just it's right in your consciousness right away you know it's you know exactly what to do that that can happen so okay right away i'm prepared i know i know not to get stuck because i know i've got the tools necessary to ensure that i don't in life as i move on <laughs> yes well exactly. it's okay i think one other thing that i found that um, kids didn't learn because usually adults really didn't learn it. They kind of learned it little by little and didn't get real good at it, and that is goal setting. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we te teach in the book is goal setting, and one of the things is um, most people are afraid to change. They're afraid to, to get unstuck because they know what they got, but they don't know what it's going to look like when they get unstuck. So I tell them, you know, we're going to set a goal, or actually a bunch of goals, and it's going to paint the picture of what it's going to look like, so it's not the unknown anymore. And then they go, oh, okay, and then they deal with it. Now, kids, they're not quite as afraid of the unknown. They like the idea that they can create what they want. Like, ooh, I can do that? Like, yeah. So let your imagination go wild, and all of a sudden they create many things that adults could never do. Absolutely. Well, again, much more open, much more trusting, much less fear much more in tune with love than they are with fear. Mm -hmm. And again, your book is presenting something that is offering, uh, as Aline was saying, the gift of consciousness, mm -hmm. which, you know, we come here and the majority of we come here and we forget where we were mm -hmm. before we got here <laughs> and the wisdom that is within the DNA that we are carrying and our ancestral lineage and all of this other stuff that we have within us and suddenly we're having to learn from scratch mm -hmm. and to be able to come with the awareness of the potentials that exist and the tools and the resources by which we may traverse through these is definitely something that is going to empower both children and adults, and uh, pretty much everybody on the planet. Mm -hmm. So it's quite wonderful. So we're getting close to the end of the show, and I wanted to give you the opportunity, John, to share any last words of wisdom with our audience that you would like to share before we say, hey, 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 until next time. <laughs> well, I want to, uh, first of all, thank you guys for having me. Uh, I, I love your, your show. I love the concept. You guys are great because... Thank First you. of all, the energy that you're putting out has really been radiating, and I think that's what makes what you do uh, palatable to other people. They're like, oh, I want to be with those people, because you just get such a good vibe, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, and the message that you deliver is also great. So uh, I think this is the kind of thing that I want more of for people. And um, and by the way, the reason I moved is because my battery was dying on the phone. So uh, I, had to the, I had to plug the charger. That's why I'm in a different place. That's all good. Uh, anyway. But anyway, so um, uh, if nothing else, uh, tell people if they want, they can go to getunstuck.com. Mm -hmm. They can find out more about me. Uh, they can find the books on Amazon and any place else you can get a book. Um, but uh, we're going to be putting together workshops, and we're doing a, a new project called the Keep On Believing Project, which is a different book I wrote. But we're going around the country in an amphibious RV, and we're going to give free workshops for all the unemployed and underemployed people 
uh, in North America. So it's going to be really cool. So wow. and we'll end up at the Super Bowl. That's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. That is really amazing. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being you. Thank you for shining your light and all of the wonderful things that you're doing and inspiring. That's wonderful. And all you that heard that, it's getunstuck.com. Um, and you can get all the information. I actually went and, and was, uh, was um, exploring, <laughs> well, there's... exploring the site, and I saw like the, the the number of different uh, uh, playbooks and and books that you have written, and all the different services that you offer, and all the things that you do, and and are involved in, and the things that are coming. So, do do check it out. It's quite wonderful. Very exciting. It's very well, useful. I'll mention one more thing on one more thing on the on the membership on the site. There's a membership button, mm -hmm. and uh, I I recorded ten years of uh, shows and. Uh, Articles and webinars, and I interviewed you know all the people in the personal development field: Neil Donald Walsh and Mary Mary uh, Mary uh, Ann Williamson. Uh, oh. Mary Williamson, yeah, actually she was on there. Uh, uh, Neil Donald Walsh, um, Jack Canfield. Anyway, lots of people, and you can even sign up for free. There's a free membership, so you, you can listen to I think Mary Ann and Jack and Neil, and at least get a sample of it. But it's it's great stuff. Uh, you know, this is it's like Oprah. I got to share their wisdom. At the same time, so uh, it's good stuff. Well, we are we are an infinitely evolving species, and mm -hmm. as much as any one of us may think we have attained in wisdom and consciousness and enlightenment, there is an infinite amount more <laughs> by which we may attain. You had made mention earlier on the show about how sometimes you've learned something and then you have to relearn it because we don't keep everything in our conscious awareness 24-7 and we do need to be reminded and even something that we think we know in and out, back and forward, there is yet an infinite number more ways that we can get to know it. So definitely there's always more to learn. Even when you're listening to the same radio show or reading the same book, over and over again, each time new wisdom will come through. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure everybody will definitely enjoy all of the gifts that you have to share on your site. And, and the definitely book as well. So it's like actually I just put that on the on the screen so people can get a good another another peek of what the book looks like. It's the Get Unstuck for Kids. At get and stuck and there, there is dot com. Free, there is a free gift on the site as well. There, there's a free gift on the site as well. If they go there, they click on it. And it's actually a whole long, uh, it's a Secrets of Success course that I taught. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you so, so very much, John, for joining us here on Being Love TV, Souls Talking Brain once again. It's been, as we knew it would be, absolutely blissful. <laughs> Thank you to all of you for sharing in this wonderful experience. And do remember, sharing is caring. Mm -hmm. So please share the show with all you know. There are sharing buttons below or on the sides or above. <laughs> So share, 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 because that's what this is all about. Touching each other through the heart, via love. And expanding consciousness into love. Exactly. Universally. Exactamento, Exactamento. Did you get that now? Hmm. So until next time, I am Ronnie Lipstein. Aline Ohanesian. And we bid you much bliss in mm -hmm. your lives. Until next week, blissedly be, everyone. Thank you for joining. Yeah.
through So 